of the epic judges that so is that happening today or is that next week i have no idea uh i guess it's today or it's a demo day or what's happening today yo how's it going tyler hey hey can you all hear me all right yes you e can. got you loud and clear yes. nice nice yeah today's a demo day for the classathon so uh some of the finalist projects are being are going through their demos and being judged right now nice epic epic okay um so the agenda for today uh i've got to yeah, pull it up let's, let's I guess I close it that. off quick yes. um just a quick update the short update is um the archive node bounty was approved and assigned to node fleet so we've got that node running um we sent the first bounty payment over to lowell and his team um so that will enable max to continue working on the indexer and complete that which i know lex you have an update on but um, that's just the quick and dirty on archive node We've gotten our first snapshot. Everything looks good. So um, we'll just keep you all updated if anything changes there. But for now, everything looks good. Yes. Yeah, so archive node uh, is, is running now, which is awesome. Um, and basically, the update from Cloudmos is that um, now that they have access to the archive node, uh, the database architecture is mostly done. Um, but we, they need the old block data to start working on the on indexing each of the contract transactions. So they're going to be doing that in the coming week. Um, they'll be balancing that also with travels around Akash Accelerate. We're going to see them. They're traveling, you know, over the weekend for um, Accelerate, um, and we'll get to see them down there in Austin as well, which would be super cool. Point being, the next step in the indexer is basically um <clears throat> indexing the contract transactions which now we have full archival node of those transactions and that can be done i know that's been just an ongoing question and concern in the community so i'm really really grateful to have that finally moving forward um oh yeah ideally very excited we about that for sure all right, well, we have Tasio on um, to talk about NFT staking. I know we talked about it in our last meeting, but Tasio has worked on our smart contracts at Passage before. Um, and so we wanted to reach out to him and see if he might be able to take on some of the NFT staking projects um, and priorities that we have already, just given his background and familiarity. So Tasio, I don't know if you've been able to review the requirements that we sent over. I'll share my screen in just a second. Yes, any questions you might have, we can also just walk through the doc if you haven't gotten a chance to look through it yet. <clears throat> yeah, I saw it, I saw it. Um, I had a few thoughts about it, but um, is this for the passage chain or is this on Juno? This is for the passage chain. Um, so it's a good question because um, we migrated all of the marketplace contracts over to the passage chain. Um, I don't know what the current state of the, the vault contract is. Um, I'd have to ask Mike specifically about um, that. I don't think, because again, it's just a um, Cosmosm environment, I don't think it should be fundamentally different <clears throat> in terms of like the uh, environment in which the, the contract would be running. I think for the most part, things are the same. Um, and we can coordinate around any you know elements that might be different structurally, but... I think for the most part, uh, the environment is going to be almost identical because it's just a Cosmos environment on the Cosmos SDK chain. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I didn't know that you guys had added Cosmos. Yes, yep. Uh, I think so, right? Uh, I feel like that is accurate, but now I'm... No, I, I'm quite quite confident we have Cosmos support, yes. <clears throat> okay, that's awesome. Um... So yeah, because I was going to say that for, for this NFT staking, a lot of the functionality is stuff that's um, already available on DAO DAO. Okay. Um, because, you know, like if you launch a DAO, you, you can stake NFTs in the DAO and there's, um, you know, there's a staking period and all these things are, are very flexible and they have a nice interface. Mm. And uh, they even, and I think they're even working on the token emissions that get kind of paid out uh, like you have spec'd out here. Yes, yes. 
but yeah, the that's, idea there is that's to not going like to be available that. on the yeah. I mean, that's available on Juno, but probably not on the Passage Chain. No, no, yeah, we don't have, and we did actually get a quote because uh, I think somebody yeah. was interested in some DAO DAO functionality um, <clears throat> for Passage, and they talked to us, and it was going to be like 100k to have yeah, them awesome. set up DAO DAO on Passage. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so. I mean, super open to what that looks like. I mean, I don't know if there's a way to um, adapt what they're doing to the passage environment or, you know, just replicate the methodology, right? Um, but just in terms of kind of like the intent here, the goal is to build something that will facilitate the um, Strange Clan egg staking event, right? But then also be useful as a general purpose tool, right? That's why uh, I kind of like... I'm pushing for that token emission concept because it's generic enough that like, you know, you could emit any kind of token that's deposited into the contract. Right. And, um, <clears throat> and, and use that in a way in for whatever, uh, uh, functionality you need. Right. Like for the egg staking, the idea is that, okay, you know, we could set up some, um, uh, uh, CW 20 token specifically for the event, um, have a, you know, supply um <clears throat> deposit it into the um into the vault and then only that token could be used to um uh uh upgrade the egg or whatever to do it, at certain points to accomplish kind of the functionality we're thinking of for incentivizing people to stake the eggs longer right in order to get more rare mounts um but then the same thing could be used for other projects as well something that was going to be more uh broad in application so that's the idea but that said, there is flexibility in that in terms of how we do that, as long as it generally fits these these parameters. Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I hear what you mean about data being expensive, and then and maybe this implementation can be a, a bit more narrow and uh, and limited, but but still flexible enough to kind of accomplish your your goals here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also so, open to you just setting up data yourself or recreating it from scratch. I mean, all of these things are options. Yeah, I, I'm, being, I think, I'm being silly here. No, 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 no. I, that would. I think. I think you guys should do Dow Dow eventually, just because they offer a lot. You know, eventually yeah. maybe you want people in these staking uh, vaults. You know, you want them to be able to vote on stuff. And oh yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. That's that's kind of what Dow Dow is good at, and they could deploy it. They could deploy it cheaper for what I could deploy it for because they have all the tools already. You know, and they have everything set up it would take me a while to get up to speed and build the front end and you know all that would take a lot longer oh but yeah i understand yeah. if um it's it's not like the priority right now yeah it is it would enable a broad level of functionality it's just um this is kind of like the infrastructure the, the difficulty with this stage of cosmos infrastructure is that it's so cool but so niche still right so yeah, the target 100%. audience is small enough that like supporting the developers who are building it is really expensive per potential client, you know? hundred um, percent. We've seen that in the past too, even with like Kepler integrations or Cosmos Station or stuff like that. Um, these are all the kind of like hidden costs of building a, a blockchain, right? Um, yeah, and everything is so expensive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But no, like, again, I mean, that's a good thing to keep in mind is there a better way to do this considering, you know, the goal of potentially in the long term implementing Dow Dow, right? Um, and maybe not, right? Maybe not, which is which is totally fine. Um, maybe okay they would accept is... uh, payment in passage tokens. Yeah, 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 totally. And I mean, shoot, you know, if um, if we were to, um, uh, uh, it it would be worthwhile to figure out. Um, what is going to be the cost? What it would be the cost in? And I, I, actually, you say that. I'm pretty sure they explicitly offered to take payment in, in passage tokens. Oh, probably nice. the, the best way to do it though would be to. Um, uh, it's just a huge amount of tokens right now for the amount of liquidity <laughs> yeah. that we have, right? Yeah. Um, so if that's something they need for their time, like there's a world in which, like you know, we could. We could make that work if it was going to be um, a um, uh, uh, 
if there's a way to basically liquidate the tokens over a longer period of time or do it in installments or whatever like there's uh -huh. a way that we can make that work but it's just and also just is as cool as the functionality is like the rate at which we would recoup those costs as a chain in terms of value yeah you know for the ecosystem it's like yes it is technically worth that because probably nobody else could do the same thing cheaper because the knowledge is so niche right like you're saying yeah um but is it worth it as a business as you know as like a as a as a value proposition for the chain right i said i was yeah. gonna say as a business right but like you know what i mean like th if you think of the chain as an economical entity right um so yeah point being I would totally consider that. Super open to feedback from the uh, community. Um, oh, oh, so this is Greg. Greg just made the point in the, the chat uh, six minutes ago that I missed. He said the character NFTs need to be staked paired with eggs and have time requirements for eggs to hatch. So, Greg, the one thing that um, we they do we do need to pair multiple NFTs. That is one thing that I'm not sure if that's unique from Dow Dow. Um, so basically, locking up. Um, an NFT from one contract with an NFT from another contract, one egg and one character. Um, and um, <clears throat> which is a change actually to the way that we have the vaults set up now, I think. So there would be some uh, uh, changes to the vault contract or, or an additional type of vault made. Um, and the, um, the idea being that um, uh, if this isn't already something that Dow Dow has then maybe this is kind of a, a moot point anyways um in terms of the time requirements greg uh i was kind of substituting that with the emission concept right um although yeah we would want to have a minimum stake if that's what you're talking about a minimum stake and some things like that so maybe so the requirements don't something cool exactly you could do is is uh have like a an nft that bundles other NFTs. So like you have an NFT collection that each NFT owns like the other two collections. So like the character and the egg and that way mm. you have, and then, and then the DAO can be based on staking those, those bundled NFTs. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. But then but it would still general, be a thing we need to make, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But and I think in general, also, um, go ahead, go ahead. So I, I just wanted to mention that there's also a mechanism that's going to be needed at some point. Uh, at least has been discussed that nfts would be needed to be staked in order to play the game and so that might be something to consider as well oh well, i don't uh we maybe we've discussed that um i think well yeah no, that's a good question yeah i do remember talking about that yeah and basically we want to have some on-chain mechanism for saying you know um such and such identity as a staked NFT, yay or nay, right? Um, and I think that we could probably accomplish with, with any of these solutions. Yeah, so I think in general, just um, maybe we should just like open up a thread somewhere where we can continuously chat about it. Cause I, I just want to like be able to fit in this work with my, my own, you know, tasks, my own roadmap. And uh, I do a lot of work on Cosmos and NFTs, so. Just have just be able to build things for, you know, for a lot of people to use and and um, you know, so we can just like maybe set up a, a, set up a chat and then organize kind of a timeline for for these things to to be shipped. So do you guys yeah. need um? We have this um, NFT staking SIG channel. We can use that. I have a bouncy up on our board just in the proposed um, column, so there's nothing attached to it. It'll be based on that discussion, but I think we can kind of hash it out in the SIG chat and then throw it into GitHub when we have a more firm bounty proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds good. Um, I and I can, I can help with other NFT stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to add you to the um, uh, um, SIG channel so you can jump in there. But like if this was um, just specifically uh nft staking for an emission of a token then uh onft has already set that up and implemented it for free for tons of nft collections so there's like a, a already functional uh, you know i say affordable but currently free option and uh there are 
the Sentinel or it's a, one of the Zen Chain Labs functions has an option mm -hmm. for if NFTs are staked somewhere that they can detect that and even do voting power by number of NFTs staked and that you can do voting right. in Discord. So like the voting can be handled through that. And we are, you know, we're already talking to Zen Chain on stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah totally. The only difficulty with the ONFT, uh, basically I've tried to set up a call um, with uh, uh, Wolfman. Yes, Wolfman. I, I was going to say that, but then I was like, wait, no, Wolf is, is the Juno dude. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Um, and um, it's just been very, very difficult to coordinate. Um, so I, 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 I worry it would not be the most reliable long-term path forward, um, even if the functionality does already exist. Um, yeah. That's fair. Unless it's open source, in which case, you know, and we can just work with what they have. Um, but yeah, one way or the other. Um, yes, let's let's continue this in the um, SIG uh, uh, NFT staking channel, and um, I will uh, we'll we'll just kind of continue the dialogue there. So, um, do you guys only need the contracts, or I guess is this proposal I mean, only about the contracts? I would say primarily um mm -hmm. there is a world where um we we can we can get somebody else to do the front end work right is, okay. if that's what you're you're thinking of yeah probably i think it would it would probably you probably get it faster that way yeah, exactly in terms of your time and your your special sauce we want you to focus on the uh contracts okay sounds good Thanks. Sick. Okay, yeah, we will keep that moving forward. Uh, we've got a couple options on the table. Uh, it'd be good to just kind of figure out, next steps will be kind of figuring out, okay, if we just make this based on what we have, um, we'll clarify any specifications or requirements, and um, uh, uh, then we'll um, talk through, you know, potential scope for um, getting that done, cost, timeline. Uh, if we were to just take that as a standalone, and in that, then, then we have the ability to kind of compare, like, well, hey, like, maybe it does make sense to integrate uh, uh, with um, Odao, and we can figure out just potential other options there. But also just, like, you know, if it's going to make, understanding what's going to make your job easier, too, would be helpful. So being able to just understand kind of the scope and the lift for this on its own gives us a basis on which to understand, like, okay. How do we potentially remove some of that lift and um, get the most out of this this push? Just for comparison, do we want to get an updated proposal from Dowdow? I know that was a few months ago at least, so maybe something has changed, maybe not. Sure. I'm totally willing to go back and be like, how about we give you $10? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll I'll have to review because I never I don't remember exactly what their proposal looked like, but I remember it being. No, no, no totally fair. That's totally fair to be like, hey, like, you know, we do have this specific application, um, and they did actually mention. Shoot, I gotta find this. Um, they said they're open to getting paid in passage. Um, okay. This, this is okay. So they said for the full deployment. All DAO types are fee is 100k one time, which covers maintenance, support, future upgrades, etc. Indefinitely. We've also found that some chains don't need the whole suite and are instead interested in a light deployment, just membership DAOs. And for that, we charge 25k per year. We typically, work with a primary on-chain funding body if one exists, uh, and through chain governance otherwise. So, I don't know. Actually, maybe 25k a year makes sense. I don't know what membership DAOs is versus all DAO types. Um, so I can get some clarification on them. So there is some stuff we could follow up on and just be like, you know, hey, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Does this help us do that? Yeah, and I heard that they're coming out with a feature called staking rewards, which is which is what you guys outlined in that spec. It's kind of the token emissions that go go to the stakers. So maybe nice. you can ask about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, and then it still sounds like there would be a place where. We would need um, our own contracts to potentially interface with the uh, DAO DAO 
contracts for you know grouping nfts or things like that so yeah have not talked yourself out of a job tasio good try <laughs> but this does give us an opportunity to kind of open up some more functionality on the dow dow side as well which is cool so i'll follow up with them on that awesome well thanks tasio for your time really appreciate you joining thanks guys e so how are Mike and Mike and Ryan and Arrow? Good. Ryan's Good. here I in the Ryan's chat with us. Yeah. Miss those guys. Just a silent worker. <laughs> I know, I know. That's part of why I'm uh, excited to potentially get you in again. It's just uh, being able to uh, uh, collaborate on some more of this stuff again. We need to do a um, a big, uh, need to pull you into a, a Bean Jam session again. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing the chat, and so Poroboro is saying that each Dowdown membership type is its own Cosmosm contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. which makes sense. Mm. I know. I was thinking the same thing, Ryan. Also, you have such a uh, calming, calming voice. You're a uh, calming presence. I'm just happy to contribute yep. again. So, so let, yeah, let's dude. just keep the chat going and uh, and see where see where it takes us. Yes, sir. And I really appreciate just your like uh, uh, broad insight as well, just in terms of like all the alternatives. That's like super helpful in terms of just understanding what we're uh, what we're actually jumping into here. Okie doke. Um, other project priorities. So that was really good in terms of NFT staking contracts. I feel like. It gives a lot of clarity for next steps there. Other priorities right now. So just overall, just in terms of like, what are the high level priorities for uh, the Passage open source community? Uh, it's the things that we're working on now, which are the biggest um, user experience improvements. You know, Indexer um, is, is number one because that is the biggest user experience uh, drawback right now in the marketplace. And um, uh, and then, you know, some of the front end uh, updates and things like that. So those are top priority just in terms of being able to, um, you know, make it a good experience. Um, but the, the key there is ease of use, right? We want it to be easy to use, uh, but then also adding value to NFTs, right? Adding some type of utility, adding some type of uh, benefit. And so the NFT staking does that. So that is a high priority uh, and also just aligns with the roadmap of our preeminent project on the marketplace which is strange clan so it, it makes sense but also offers opportunities for other uh projects um but then next you know it's so ease of use and utility are really kind of the big things that we're pushing for in terms of the the goals and so one of those is uh creating a front end for new collections right we have a lot of tooling uh, basically in the command line and in the, the back end for setting up new collections. There's um, tools for, I'm going to, I'm going to basically for setting up like the uh, images and whatnot on IPFS. Like we have a bunch of tools to automate some of the steps in that process, but it's all via command line right now. So if we can set up a front end for that, we can make it easier for projects to, to join. Um, and even if it ends up being a whitelisted process at first, right? where not everybody is going to um, uh, be uh, uh, like, it's not going to be open to anyone, but at least for people we do pull in, the process of them getting a, a, a collection up on the Passage Marketplace is simpler, right? So that is a priority that we're kind of looking into right now because one of the things that we want to do is basically start a launch pad for the Marketplace. And this would be something like we put together an incentive pool um, for uh, uh, new collections to launch on the marketplace. And we'll basically have uh, submissions where people can submit to get uh, these incentives. One structure that we've talked about is basically like a, um, uh, uh, I mean, how would, how would you phrase that, Brian? Like an upfront bonus, basically a guarantee of a certain minimum uh, for your NFT collection. So basically imagine like, 
if you list your, uh, if you get approved through our program, our, our Launchpad program, and you list on the marketplace, you're guaranteed a, a minimum of, of passage, right? So like anything you don't sell in a certain time period will make up the difference up to like 5K or whatever it may be for a certain number of participants, right? Um, the idea being that we want to kind of remove some of the um, risk of people launching projects on the passage marketplace. And this, again, this is just kind of a um, rough concept, but the goal there is primarily to incentivize people um, getting new creatives on the marketplace as we open up more of this utility, right? Uh, via NFT staking. And then on the passage platform side, a big priority right now is the is finishing the PALS uh, avatar system um, so that the NFTs can have utility within the passage application for customizations, right? Um, so that is one Ryan, big is there kind of anything play. you want to add there? Because um, I yeah, know yeah, please, we, please. we were talking extensively about this yesterday. I cannot hear you if you are talking. Sometimes just leaving and coming back helps, but. Without fail. I hear you, Brianna. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Ryan that's not. Yeah. Is that good now? There you go. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so Lex touched on it, but we're we're currently doing some some kind of final testing on Elite, which is separate from you know the open source initiative. Um, but it is gonna be a really great opportunity to get um, world creators building and the the goal is to get them using the chain for whatever they're whatever their needs might be. And I know some of the users won't, but a, you know, a lot of the ones we're talking to will want to use the chain in some way. Um, and so we are uh, looking to start onboarding our, our first kind of selected participants. And I think we're the first week or two, I think we're looking to start with uh, like five or six that we have lined up um, that are all committed and they kind of span different, um, different genres of experience. Um, but so, uh, we're launching our B0, our B1 is the next version, and we're purposely leaving that slate very blank based, so we can add stuff based on user feedback, and some of that stuff might end up being um, things that are more appropriate as open source initiatives. It just depends on what people want to be able to do. But the one thing that we know we want in B1, and it will likely become before B1, we'll release it when it's ready, is um, both NFT gating um, and, and really just NFT integration. So. So the, it's kind of like two forks off of one initial set of work. So the initial set of work is, um, you know, a, you know, access the, to the indexer and allowing us to do blank based on NFT ownership. And um, the two most kind of obvious or, or first integrations of that will be um, NFT gating ownership to enter an experience, um, other than the second one being TALS. And that TALS is something we're tremendously excited about, one, because Anybody who's been around a while knows that we, you know, are, you know, we've been excited about that for a long time. But we also know that people have bought into those, those assets, and we're we're really excited that they can finally, you know, have a way to use them. Um, and we're we're excited about what that means for, you know, participation in the marketplace from a consumer perspective, but also from a, like Lex said, from a creator perspective. So we were discussing earlier this week about that that launch pad, and we're, um, we really love the idea of, you know. Uh, quality control, but, but but opening it up and allowing people to participate and making sure that they know if they participate, you know, in this, you know, in this new endeavor, you know, they are getting compensated and it's not a matter of, hey, if my NFTs don't sell because market conditions or whatever reasons, um, they're just kind of guaranteed some amount of income. And um, we, we want to leave that a little open for now so we can figure out what the best way to get the most talented kind of creators involved in that is. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, we think that'll be a really big benefit to the chain and, and the open source community. And, and obviously our, our initial set of users is small. We're, we're going to be ramping that up fairly quickly though. And we have, um, a lot of people in the queue to, to kind of 
join up with Passage Elite are uh, largely Web3 focused initiatives, and a lot of them have the goal of they, they want to create a space that people can just join into. So rather than you know necessarily a closed company isn't going to be you know, inviting everybody in, um, you know it might make sense for them to have very specific user sets that are joining consistently. Uh, we want to make sure that there's also groups that are coming in and creating experiences that are meant for anybody to jump into, which means that anybody can, um, you know, anybody can jump in to try out their assets and participate in those events. And um, we want to be, make sure we're prioritizing some amount of those types of users in every um, in every batch of new kind of elite users that we're adding into. So it's it's a thing that is not directly tied to, to open source, but um, but the integrations we're adding to elite. Um, to, to leverage the marketplace in different ways uh, will we'll hopefully have a, a really a really nice benefit and 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 you know and vice versa. Obviously, Elite also benefits hugely from um, you know, the pool of users and the ability to gate things based on that. So I think that's uh, that was a longer version of what Lex said. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's a huge opportunity here. Like Ryan said, trying to keep it flexible for now. Like none of this stuff is is set in stone. It's just what we've been talking about, we want to create an incentive program, especially as we're unlocking some of this native utility uh, on the chain and, and in the passage platform. And um, yeah, this is, uh, we, we want to be setting up for a time when we can really be pulling in artists actively rather than um, more passively, like really kind of like put the word out and get some of the best reading in this space. And, and one more thing, the, with that launchpad idea, I think that the current idea is to is to bring that out um, around the time where we hit V2 of Passage Elite. And the, the only the key difference in V2 is that it'll be publicly available to just sign up and start using, which means that if you are, you know, a, a user who, um, uh, who who just wants to create your own world, whether it's because you want to use Passage or you just want to try out your palace assets, wherever it is, you'll be able to just sign up at that point rather than kind of Going through a um, going through a smaller number of, uh, of of activations. So when we bring in artists to sell assets and 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 make that commitment and do that work, we want to make sure that the, you know the people they're selling to um, you know have have many many options, including creating their own world. So um, that's when we would probably go for for that launchpad program. But the the gating and house integrations would happen well before that. So it's the we can work out all the kinks, we can get that running really smoothly, and then once all that's ready and once people can create their own passage world in Elite, um, using, you know, ranging from our free plan up to up to paid plans, whatever they feel like doing, that's when we would say, all right, let's 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 really commit dollars to going and getting artists and making sure that, um, you know, there's there's a big variety of, um, of, of assets that can be used uh, in passage. Yeah, for sure. Means. Then, really, um, the um, next big thing was uh, uh, the other uh, uh, like priority or item we've had in front of us. This is more on the usability side, which is just being able to accept payments and other currencies for for uh, for new collections. So, um, for people who are listing NFTs or for people who are minting NFTs, like setting up, creating collections allowing them to mint or trade in different uh, currencies. And we would kind of figure out, you know, I think honestly, first priority would be something like USDC, uh, potentially also accepting highly liquid tokens like Atom. Um, and what's unique about this is there's a really unique balance because it allows us to kind of create uh, a structure where we can start to build uh, liquidity, we can start to build, uh, you know, a treasury that is diversified from passage tokens, um, and um, also set up, you know, some type of system for, you know, buying passage with those tokens, right? Because there is a benefit to simply um, having people purchase passage tokens, so that we have more activity, which creates, in general, uh, a better user experience for being able to buy if there's more volume and more interest in the token. So it improves the user experience uh, when people have to buy passage or to get passage NFTs and integrate with the market or interact with the marketplace. But the benefit of being able to use other tokens is that um, we can capture that value and control 
how we are um, basically funneling that value into the passage token, right? In terms of um, pairing with passage tokens for liquidity or whatever it may be, it gives us a more intentional approach to that. But again, this is more of a, a usability thing. It's not as much a, a utility thing. So it's lower on the list compared to things like NFT staking or the um, uh, PALS integrations for avatar customizations or uh, a front end for um, setting up NFT collections because those are going to um, more directly impact creators and purveyors of the passage marketplace. So that's kind of the list of things. If there's something you'd like to see on that roadmap, um, this is not a concrete roadmap, but just in terms of like things that are in front of us, priorities in terms of improving the marketplace and um, just creating more opportunities on the marketplace, uh, drop it in the chat. Um, tag one of us because we want that to reflect the goals and needs of the community. And I know I have seen at different times really solid ideas that probably just got uh, uh, lost somewhere in the, the chat. So ping us, make sure that we can see that um, and we can put it in front of the, the committee because I do really want the utility of the marketplace to reflect the, uh, the needs of the community too. This is by no means a definitive list, so. Yeah, totally. Cato integration, for sure. I like that. Um, I have not tried Cato recently. So the goal for me would be um, just kind of ensuring we can get the best possible uh, uh, like I, UX. I, I use it a lot. <laughs> okay, and uh, they, uh, I also, I've been talking to some of the guys on their team and uh so i mean there could be potential even for promotions i don't know if you've seen in the past but they've done them for uh osmo and uh adam and a couple others where there was a uh, a month that they had people compete to have the most purchases of a coin and then distributed an amount of that coin so like i won a bunch of osmo and adam through that so they could, the same could be done with like passage that's awesome yeah, let me, um, I've got a, uh, a chat with Vince, um, and we talked through this specifically, integration, but I just don't remember what the, um, what the details were. So let me circle back on that. Um, yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think as these priorities come up and we discuss them, we can start adding them to the bounty board just in the proposed and then actively discuss, like, how do we prioritize this? And do we have someone who's going to take it on or wanting to take it on? And and we can get more details. I think just process-wise, we saw that um, we need to get a bit more detail from some of these proposals. Like for the archive node, um, we got some more specifics about SLAs and like downtime and things like this. So I think that was super helpful and it's kind of a learning experience for us just to see how we prioritize and move things forward, like with consensus, but also in an efficient way, so. Yes. And, and this is, you know, I mean, here's, here's the one thing. I do think Cato or a Fiat on-ramp is going to be more useful as we remove other roadblocks, right? Like I do think in some ways just building passive liquidity is a, is a higher priority, which we've been doing. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, the, um, the, the passage USDC pool is, is growing. Um, and we've been um, kind of making some intentional efforts to build liquidity and just improve the user experience for the chain. Um, but, um, yeah, that said, I think those are probably bigger roadblocks to um, onboarding new people onto the chain than like having a fiat on ramp because there are probably more people who are already in the Cosmos ecosystem who just haven't, you know, uh, uh, interact with the chain because, you know, if they bought 10K, it would be, a, you know, it would pump the price or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's harder for them to get a bag quickly. They'd have to do it over time, whatever. Um, then there are people who aren't in the Cosmos ecosystem 
who are like, oh, I want a bag of passage, but I don't know how to use osmosis, right? Um, so that said, I do think this is a priority. I think it'll have the most impact once we clear some of these earlier hurdles. But that said, you know, and again, one of the other things too is like this structure we're building out where people could um, uh, uh, pay for passage tools and whatnot via Stripe and us purchase passage on the back end, right? Like those are the types of things where like if people are buying something from the um, uh, uh, passage platform, for instance, like where I actually do see like, no, 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 there will be a lot of non-crypto users on that side of things. Um, on the marketplace side of things, frankly, I think most of the people, again, it's more going to be like a liquidity barrier than it would be a um, Cosmos ecosystem barrier. But that said, I do think that will be useful. Um, that will unlock a certain group of people at the right time. Just order of operations more than, uh, you know, I do still think it is a, a big value add. Mm -hmm. Okay, this has been a good one. We went over. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, really enjoy conversation around uh, NFT staking. And um, yeah, just a lot of the things coming up. I think we're unlocking some opportunities with both the developments for the platform and the developments around the chain. So really appreciate everybody who's been showing up and both on the development side and the community side. Um, really appreciate the feedback. Uh, and thanks for, for hanging out with us. Thanks, everybody. E. Go team, go. Hey, Dragon fam. <laughs>